Let's take a look at some charts on EOS for Brave New Coin. So, man, I could I could spend two hours talking about EOS and the failures and issues and everything that's gone on, the shenanigans that's gone on with EOS. Um, I was there on Ground Zero when Brandon Bloomer was giving talks on the ICO roadshows saying that it's going to be the next best thing since sliced bread. It's going to be enabling Uber and Lyft and all these other crazy companies, DAX as they're called, DAX and DAOs and just promising things left over right. They ended up raising $4 billion thereabouts or in excess of over the course of a year in the largest ICO ever. It was a blank check. It was just an insane, insane idea that thus far in my personal opinion and perhaps in the opinion of the market has really done a bunch of nothing. They promised to be an ETH killer. I'll talk about that at the very end. But they really probably disappointed many people on what they promised and what they delivered. So Block One is the company. EOS.io is part of that somewhere. I want to start here because for me, it's the only way EOS can save itself um, price-wise. Now, Block One, the company, is not EOS, the coin. There was a lot of confusion for projects like this. Um, even when we're talking about Link, you know, what's in the best interest of Smart Contract Limited, the holding company for Link, isn't necessarily in the best interest for the Link token price and therefore what some people some people view as Link shareholders, really, which is uh, where the security argument comes in. EOS has already paid their fines uh, to the SEC for the unregistered securities offering, which was a fraction of their total raise, so who cares, right? But if we focus on Block 1, and what they probably still own, which is around 140,000 BTC, that is 6.8, 6.78 billion dollars. And if we go ahead and we look at their total market cap, in the green down here, 3.6. So their total market cap for their coin is half of their treasury. So they could save the token price by sort of doing what Digix DAO did and offering people BTC back or something. You know, they can. <laughs> They can do something temporarily or just give up, you know. Brendan Bloomer, the CTO, the historically wandering dev who creates projects and then disappears, uh, disappeared from EOS a few weeks ago, a few months ago, uh, formally, stepped back from his role as CTO. Money has been paid, obviously. Again, this leaves a bad taste in people's mouth, especially if it happens over and over and over again. I don't think anybody expects anybody to work for a company their entire life, but when you have a history of doing such activities, you know, fool me once, right? How many times is it going to take? So we have all that stuff. We have the promises, the ICO, people at the top sort of moving on. The market cap is what it is. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, the market cap is less than the total raise at this point as well. Something else to consider. It is completely tied to the rest of the market. It has no mind of its own. It really never has. Uh, I don't know. I have, I have nothing but terrible things to say about EOS. You know, I talk about the state of centralization for EOS on every single video, which probably zero people actually care about. But if you want to talk about decentralization, you have to look at the nodes, the block producers, the governance, who has control over this. If most of this is in Asia, you have a geographical centralization issue. If most of these are exchanges, you have a conflict of interest centralization issue if the community ever disagrees with governance of the exchanges. Now, you can always move your EOS, um, the representative democracy, if you will, uh, elsewhere on other block producers. But these problems don't really go away. You know, I don't know how many total nodes, uh, full nodes there are, which is the entire history of the blockchain. I don't know the size of the full nodes for EOS. No idea. I don't even know the number, like I said, the number of full nodes, it could be zero. There could be zero full nodes for EOS. Nobody would know. There were as many as three a few months ago, but I have no idea how many total full nodes there are uh, for EOS. I don't think anybody does. Probably no one cares either. <laughs> you know, None of this stuff matters until everything starts breaking down. If you look at the transactions per day for EOS in the line here and the block counts in the fill and really the only metrics that coin metrics looks at because most of the other data is unreliable which is another red flag for any blockchain if i can't look at the basic data you know like the full nodes what, what are we even doing here um 
transaction counts spiked way up in mid-2020 and have gone way down since then. Most of the parties happening on ETH or other chains that have DAP activity, I guess. Um, block counts went way down in early 2020 because there was an airdrop that basically crippled the chain. Uh, all that's been restored now as far as block counts and chain activity. But overall, you know, transactions rising and falling, not bearish. Um, looking at DAP activity on EOS sorted by users over the past 30 days. Upland, which is, I believe, like a Decentraland type thing. And yep, the social thing has users, um, exchanges, DeFi, I don't know what DeFi boxes. Games, games, uh, gambling, IPSE, not sure, but it's probably some sort of internet protocol naming service, maybe? Not sure. Um, those all have decent amount of users over the past 30 days. If we go to volume, it's probably uh, New Dax, yeah, the uh, exchange has had the most volume. A few months ago, volumes were in the billions, and it was the dice, dice games that were winning out from, if memory serves correctly, but not sure what most of these are. You know, you don't really hear, at least I don't, on the circles that I follow, you don't hear too much about the uh, DeFi stuff on EOS right now. If we look at EOS.io, Google Trends, those have been rising probably as a function of price more than anything. Again, I haven't really heard too, too much about EOS. The biggest news lately has been Larimer leaving, and that was several weeks ago at this point. Flipping to technicals, we have the 50, 200 EMAs, VPVR, yearly pivots, RSI volume, and open interest on Bitfinex. So open interest on longs hit an all-time high a few days ago. Those have been culled significantly, maybe 20% since that all-time high. Uh, but for the most part, longs have just kind of held at this level since uh, 2018, despite price basically not revisiting 2018 highs. Trend metrics have flipped. They've snaked bullish and bearish over and over and over again. Prices sort of just stagnated, stayed flat in this massive volume VPVR node at this point. Um, this should act as support if prices are revisited to that area, just because there's, there was a ton of interest there before. There'll probably be a ton of interest there once again. As far as resistance on the way up, uh, whatever this is, 350, 5, 8, and then there's a little bit of VPVR resistance beyond that. But the general picture on the EOS, EOSD chart is just, you know, it's done a bunch of nothing <laughs> since 2018. Uh, RSI showing no uh, bear div on that previous high volume, tons of selling volume in here. You zoomed in on that. So trend looks okay. Prices above 250 look okay. If 250 can hold, which it should hold, decent amount of support there, yearly pivot, 200 day moving average as well. If you look at the pitchfork and some people, <laughs> I don't understand the pitchfork hate, uh, hate honestly, it's just uh, another trend metric. You pick three points, you get a rate of change. I continue to follow these because if price pops above or below, that is typically an indication of trend continuation or trend reversal in this case. So price was above the pitchfork for several, several days, probably several months, and eventually it did something. So at this point, it's probably okay to retire the pitchfork. I wouldn't expect prices sub 75 cents anytime soon, unless something catastrophic happens. But you can definitively say that the bear trend for EOS since 2018 is likely over. Now, that doesn't mean EOS is going to all-time highs, but it does mean that the rate of change since 2018 is probably ending. Now, looking at the three-day cloud, just zooming way out, you know, anytime you get a chart where a bunch of nothing has happened, trend metrics are going to be super noisy on lower time frames. So just keep zooming out. Look at the three-day, look at the weekly, look at the monthly, you know, whatever you got to do to get some discernible signal here. And it's pretty obvious since 2018, price has not been above the daily cloud pretty much ever, aside from early 2020. And it's finally popping above, uh, retesting the key June now. So trend metrics look decent for EOS USD. It's above the 200, it's above the daily cloud. As far as the litmus test is concerned, looks okay on the bullish side. Now, if you look at the EOS BTC pair, it's at all-time lows or breaking all-time lows. Bit of a TKC clamp, so maybe it's a little oversold here, but it's hard to believe in the EOS story over the BTC story. You know, if you're looking at pairs and you're comparing between the two fundamentals, it's, you know, it's night and day. You know, you don't have corporations 
clamoring to buy EOS. You don't have people all over the world looking to buy EOS for a long-term hold. So you're seeing that play out on the chart. As far as resistance on the way up, all of these VPVR levels are going to be massive resistance on any bullish mean reversion attempt. This is the three-day chart once again. So since 2018, it's just been death, doom, devastation, really no hope on this chart. Tried to consolidate here in late 2020, and my guess is the DeFi stuff just took over and sucked all the air out of the room. Even though Bitcoin isn't DeFi, um, there is rotation plays. You know, if something's not moving for weeks and months and years, people are going to go try to get returns elsewhere. So the possibility of continued lower lows, new all-time lows, you know, it, I wouldn't write that off. I wouldn't say that's not an expectation. You can see what happened the last time there was a TKC clamp. Not as severe as this, but I just mean the uh, TK lines flattening out here that typically indicates consolidation. So it took six months, basically, for a break of the consolidation last time to the upside. A little mini consolidation here that took several months. So I wouldn't want to short this. I wouldn't want to long this. I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't touch this in any way. There's just, to me, there's no hope for even a mean reversion to these levels. It's probably just going to stagnate and range between 5,000 and 10,000 sats. That'd be my guess. And then if you really want to see market dynamics at play, look at EOS ETH and it is revisiting the all-time low and just the haste at which it do did that throughout 2020. It had a decent shot from 2018 to 2020 to be the quote-unquote ETH killer and do something. Um, and it just couldn't muster any bullish capacity against ETH whatsoever. DeFi took over, everything else took over for ETH, and it's, you know, that's all she wrote. You could argue there's some sort of support down here based on VPVR, based on the TKC clamp, just massive oversold parabolic stuff, a mean reversion possibilities to 01. You know, you could, you could argue all that stuff, but the reality is I don't see anything bullish for EOS on any metric. Again, the only way that EOS can really do anything or turn this ship around is do something with its treasury that affects the token price in a positive way. You know, that's up to them what they want to do with it as far as a DAO or something giving back. I, I don't know, you know, <laughs> I don't know what EOS is going to do, what it can do. It's losing people at the top. It's hemorrhaging price. It's got nothing good going for it as far as I can tell. So that's all I have for this one. Like, this comment, sh like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Hit me up in the comments below. Happy trading.